In the animated series, very familiar with the world. Okay. Arguably the greatest animated series of all time, in my opinion. Yeah. Batman Beyond was phenomenal. Yeah. Everything about it was amazing. But Batman the Animated Series broke so many molds. There was no cartoony acting. It was printed on the black, dark paper. It was just so good. Kevin is Batman. I mean, it was so good that I figured the chances of me even getting a role were so slim that there was no way. But I went in knowing exactly what I was up against because I was such a fan of the show. Andrea talked about how she brought the actors in to work with Kevin. Now, how did you go from you know Boy Meets World, I guess, to voice acting in, in this and, and, and getting on her radar? Luck. Um, it, it, the, the true story is that they were casting for Batman Beyond and Bruce Timm's wife was a Boy Meets World fan. So she said, you should bring in Will. I went in and I read, and I think I read again, and I figured there was no way. I mean, there's no... I, I always tell people that the, you're coming into your first animated series ever and getting the part of Batman with Andrea Romano, Bruce Timm, Kevin Conroy. It's the equivalent of, I've never been in a movie before, okay, now you're starring in a Steven Spielberg film. I mean, it's that, it's that big in the animated world. So I figured the chance was between Slim and none. And I think there's... As an actor, that almost took all the pressure off. That coupled with not having to play Bruce Wayne. Because you have to go in and, get, you know, hey, I've got the mantle of Bruce Wayne on my shoulders. I, I, I can honestly look at myself and say I'm the best Terry McGinnis there's ever been. Because <laughs> I'm the only Terry McGinnis there's ever been. You can't do that with Bruce. So, uh, yeah, it's, been, uh, it's been, a, been a ride, that's for sure. I can't believe it's been 20 years, but yeah. So, Will, you mentioned that Batman Beyond was your first acting role. How did you how did you feel and what did you do to make the best Terry McGinnis? I listened to, to people who knew what they were talking about. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I, Kevin was... We always talk about how the relationship between Bruce and Terry was very similar to the relationship between Kevin and I because I had never done voice acting before. So he jumped in and really became my mentor, how to sit in the chair, how to emote with just using your voice. Um, I mean, it, just as an actor, your, your impulses, and we see this with phenomenal actors all the time who've never done animation. You're sitting in front of the microphone and the person next to you says something, your instinct is to turn and answer them. Well, you can't do that when, with the microphone in front of you. So little things like that, and then it's been 20 years of him and I being friends and, and, and him mentoring me in this side of the industry. So um, that was obviously hugely helpful. Andre Romano, who is arguably the greatest animation director in history, um, being your first director and teaching you what to do, what not to do, how to do it, the gentle kind of, she was an actress as well, so the gentle kind of nudge, how to speak to us. Um, again, you could not have created a better scenario for taking a young actor and teaching him the world than giving me these people to work with. It was just phenomenal. So since you later went on to actually play Dick Grayson Nightwing, was that kind of trippy saying, oh wait, I've played future sidekick, now I'm going back to play the original one? It was, uh, it was certainly a trip. It's so funny because it, it, Terry and, and Dick actually have a lot in common when it comes to kind of personality. So there's almost that, that flippancy with both of them. The difference between Terry and Dick is Terry never had that the same kind of grudge he did against Batman. And I think one of the reasons that, that Dick and, and, and Bruce had that is because they were on the battlefield at the same time. So Dick was always trying to, I don't need you, I can one-up you. Terry only had Bruce in his head. He was never actually fighting anybody with him. And I think that really kind of changed the dynamic between the two. So if you, I, I kind of can think about that going in um, where they're both kind of father figures. You know, Bruce is a father figure to Dick and to Terry, but in very different ways. It's almost <coughs> like the relationship between the firstborn and then the lastborn. And so it's like Terry's the lastborn who kind of got a little more of the love, where Dick is the firstborn, where it's like, no, you're gonna, if you're going to inherit this, you're going to do it my way. And so I think if I came in when I kind of looked at it like that, it was, it was interesting. And I was the lastborn in my family, so I kind of knew what that was like. Actually, I take that back. Dick wasn't even the firstborn. Dick was the, the bastard middle child, um, which made it even, even harder for him. Uh, but that, w that certainly changed the, the relationship uh, uh, between the two. But other than that, they, they still got that kind of funny arrogance about them that really make Dick and Terry kind of kind of very similar. Would love to have seen them fight, uh, <laughs> frankly. And I gotta hate to say it, but no, I'm not even gonna say it. Uh, <laughs> I mean, here's, here's, but here's the thing, here's the thing about Terry, is you're never just fighting Terry, because he's got Bruce in his head. So you're fighting Terry and Bruce. Yeah. And that's a pretty formidable oh, yeah. uh, comparison between the two. And the suit hooks in the car, and that's just the coolest <laughs> thing ever. So, so, so when, oh, sorry. Like, 
Okay. So when Batman, yeah, sorry, I'll go sorry. So when Batman uh, Beyond was canceled, we had to wait a year before we finally got that conclusion. Mm -hmm. How was it for you when you found out we actually get to finish the story? I have told the story before because it's true. <laughs> um, Bruce Tim had never called me, never, <laughs> never called my house in the entire series, entire run of the series, and my phone rings, and he goes, uh, uh, "Hey, Will, it's Bruce." I'm sending you a script. Anybody finds out what's in it, I'll kill you. <laughs> See you Friday. Click. And that was it. And so, and this was pre-internet. We didn't get, this is when you literally had the script delivered to your house. So I have the paper script delivered to my house and it's just me ringing, okay. And then it was, I mean, nobody was expecting that. So I flipped out. It was awesome. And then it's seeing Kevin again, like, I'm your boy, I'm your boy. <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, it was pretty great. It was pretty cool. So, um, yeah, I, Watched Batman Beyond for two years before I discovered it was actually you as the voice. I, <laughs> I watched Batman Beyond religiously, and okay. I, just, I could not tell that you know that you were the same person. Yes, uh, exactly. So um, yeah. So then, I guess cause I'm so used. To, we're so used to you uh, sitting here, basically Eric Matthews to me. Then Terry's more serious. It's yeah. more, I was curious going from that more comedic role of that to something more serious, like action oriented. Mm -hmm. It was. It was difficult. It's also the thing that people don't realize is we, we shot Boy Meets World every Thursday night and we recorded Batman Beyond every Thursday morning. So I went from Batman Beyond being that serious thing right to Eric Matthews in front of the audience and to make it worse, this is, this is another true story. I haven't told this at all today. Um, the last episode of Batman Beyond recorded in the morning that the last episode of Boy Meets World filmed. So both of my shows ended on exactly the same Thursday. Ooh. It was a tough Thursday. <laughs> we went back for Batman Beyond to do a lot more, and you know we still yeah. had ADR for years and all that kind of stuff. But it was uh, both both shows ended um, on the same day. Yeah. Have you ever thought about a Batman Beyond Beyond what that would look like if an older Terry were to take on a, a younger? It's so funny, we were just talking about that in the other, I joked because Kevin said you hit 40 in the industry and then they make you 80. <laughs> uh, and I said yes, and I'm now announcing ba I'm Batman Beyond Beyond, where now that I'm 42, Terry is now 85, and he's taken on you know, a new, a new uh, uh, adventure. I, I'm not sure Terry would have taken an apprentice. I'm grappling. We're talking apprentices. Okay. Um, because uh, <laughs> Terry uh, looked at Bruce's life and said, there's things about Bruce's life I don't want. And I think Terry and Dana got married. So I think he's going to have kids and all that good stuff. And at that point, you might have to give up the cowl. So I don't, I don't know. We'll have to see. Okay. So I have a really quick last question. Yes. So we have we met before? We've met before, haven't we? Oh, it's very familiar met. to me. This is my first interview. Okay. You went very <laughs> familiar. But it's nice to meet you. Anyway, so <laughs> we all know Batman has been established. What makes Terry so endearing? I frankly think it's because they took Batman and they put him in high school. Okay. And so I think a lot of high school kids were able to relate to that. You know, he wasn't the 25 or 30 year old billionaire playboy. He was a guy who lived on the wrong side of the tracks, who came from kind of a broken home and was able to grow up to become Batman. He was still dealing with getting dates, going to prom, bullying in school, drug use with slappers. I mean, they were they were really kind of hitting all these themes that are still relevant today. And uh, anytime a kid can look at a superhero and go, it, that's possible for me. And that's the thing that, why Batman endures, because Batman doesn't have superpowers. He's not uh, a Superman who's come down from another planet to save all us mortals. He's a guy who just goes and does what he has to do. So to take that and make him a kid, I think is the thing that makes people go, oh my God, I really can. I can become Batman. Thank you. I did. So anybody can? Thank you. Great stories. Thank you guys so much. Have a great Comic-Con.